while my brother and his wife are away on a trip. I'm taking care of my niece at my brother's house. We were excitedly talking about our plans for the next day when my niece suddenly opened the closet door, as if she was getting ready for bed. I was surprised to see her climb into the closet without any hesitation. I quickly grabbed her arm, confused by what she was doing. Let me tell you a bit about myself. I'm Lily, a 24-year-old housewife. My brother is five years older than me. Since we lost our parents, we've always been there for each other, like best friends. Even after we both got married, we stayed close. My husband's parents are nice, but they live far away, too far for a quick visit. So we rely on each other for support. My brother's wedding happened in a rush, and things have been tense with his wife's family ever since. We don't have any neighbors we can turn to for help. So we lean on each other. Both our families have daughters. My niece, Emily, is a bit older than my daughter, Alice. They're like sisters, growing up together. When Emily was about to turn 10, my brother told me about their upcoming 10th wedding anniversary trip. Could you look after Emily while we're away? It's just for one night, and we'll be nearby. We thought it'd be nice to have some alone time. My brother asked, blushing happily. I agreed without hesitation, saying, sure, no problem. We made plans, and I asked when I should pick up Emily, but my brother said they wanted me to stay over because they were worried about leaving the house empty. Even though I teased him about being overly cautious, I agreed. I left my daughter with my husband, who was a bit unsure about sleepovers. Everything was calm until the day of their anniversary trip. As Emily's parents left, she seemed nervous. I held her hand to comfort her. Now it was just Emily and me looking after the house. At first, I planned to bring my daughter, Alice, along, but Emily was really insistent that Alice shouldn't come. So I dropped that idea. We'd been to my brother's house before as a family, but Emily must have had a reason for not wanting Alice there that day. It's a shame we can't invite Alice over to play, Emily said, sounding a bit lonely. How about we go to my house after breakfast tomorrow? I suggested, and her face lit up with excitement. I had prepared some fun games and puzzles, even ones that adults would enjoy. As we played games and cooked dinner together, Emily seemed nervous, sticking close to me and looking around the room a lot. At first, I thought she was just missing her parents, but even after a few hours, she still seemed uneasy. Is something bothering you? I asked, but she just kept saying she was fine without explaining what was wrong. Her behavior was like she was worried about something invisible, and I didn't understand until bedtime. As Emily changed into her pajamas, she said, Let's go to bed early today and head to Aunt Lily's house in the morning. She opened the closet door, revealing a set of bedding inside. Wait, Emily, you're sleeping in there? I blurted out, surprised. Yes, but it's okay. I'll leave the door slightly open, so if anything happens, I'll wake up, she explained seriously. I suggested we sleep together, but after a few tries, she reluctantly agreed. She asked if it was okay to keep the bedding in the closet as her hiding spot, and even though I was curious, I agreed. Then, I asked her why she needed a hiding place. After making me promise not to laugh, she whispered, The monster is coming. It's really scary and clever. That's why it only comes when Daddy isn't here. Mommy says I can't leave the closet until she drives the monster away. She always cries while she's doing it. I tried to help her once. Emily held onto my arm tightly, and I realized her fear was genuine, but when the monster started pounding on the closet door, Emily trembled in fear. Holding her close, I sighed deeply. This monster might actually be real, not just a trick to get a scared kid into bed. I was shocked by my sister-in-law's affair and felt lost. If the monster was her lover, it wouldn't come here when she wasn't around. But Emily still believed it came when her dad wasn't home. Today, with my brother away, she insisted we not invite my daughter and stuck to me like glue, watching the windows and door. Thinking of Emily and my trusting brother made me angry at my sister-in-law, but calming Emily was my priority. I squeezed her hand and smiled, reassuring her, Aunt Lily is here today. Maybe the monster will be scared of a stranger like me. And your mom, who's usually targeted, is with your dad today.
so the monster can't get her. Emily still looked anxious, fearing the monster's arrival. I convinced her to talk to me about her fears and suggested we hide in the closet together. Hoping to ease her worries one by one, I stayed with her until she fell asleep. But then Emily told me something else that made me panic. I rushed her back to my house, still in her pajamas, and explained everything to my husband. He and his friends went to my brother's house. Around 10 p.m., my brother called, asking about Emily and reminding me to lock up and rest. After ensuring Emily was asleep with my daughter, I promised to drive the monster away. The next morning, my husband returned after staying overnight at my brother's house. My body shook with fear and anger as he recounted what happened last night. Relieved that my decision to leave had been right, I spent the day at home with Emily and my family, waiting for my brother and his wife to come for her. When my brother saw us, he quickly questioned why Emily and I had left the house during the night. Why didn't you stay at our house? I told you not to leave, he said sternly. Feeling uneasy, I calmly asked how he knew we weren't home while he was away. He admitted he gave Emily a smartphone with GPS, but his evasive eyes hinted something was off. If that was true, he could have easily checked that we weren't at his house. Suppressing my urge to confront him, I continued quietly, not wanting the kids to hear. Then, my brother asked about two unfamiliar men who showed up at our house late at night. He was concerned for our safety, but his gaze seemed cautious as he spoke. I pressed my brother for answers about the suspicious men, but my sister-in-law interrupted, loudly calling Emily over and insisting they leave. Emily timidly emerged from the other room, but her mother forcefully took her hand. Suddenly, my brother's tone changed. I'm not forgiving you for this, but we're leaving for today, he said, pushing Emily towards the door. They tried to take her, but she resisted, reaching out to me. I pulled Emily behind me, shielding her. My sister-in-law was surprised and let go of Emily's hand, but I kept her close as my brother and his wife approached angrily. My husband and I stood firm, refusing to let them take Emily. We managed to push them out, and police officers waiting outside swiftly apprehended them. They were disoriented, not expecting this. My brother argued with the police, saying if they didn't return Emily, we should be detained. My sister-in-law claimed we had locked Emily up, urging the police to save her. But my daughter pointed out that Emily didn't seem locked up at all. My brother tried to command Emily to come to him, but she was scared and stayed by my side. My sister-in-law stood silently as my brother yelled at the police, restrained in the entrance. My husband then showed him a video he'd had recorded the night before at their house. In the video, Two men entered the house with a spare key, greeting each other and mentioning my brother's name, unaware of our presence. He told me it was a 30% discount because she's his sister. One of them smirked, glancing at my husband and his friends. When my husband's friend dodged the question, one of the men bragged about getting an even bigger discount because they were good friends with my brother and his wife, even mentioning a specific amount. We're lucky we get to play with the kids today one of them said with a grotesque laugh. My skin crawled just listening to the audio. Then my husband's friends started bombarding them with questions, asking if they often came here and if they always came together. Sensing something was wrong, the men asked where Emily and I were. When they saw my husband's angry expression as he said we weren't here, they realized the seriousness and quickly fled. They either didn't know about my husband's recording or chose not to mention it. My brother, who was supposed to be close to them, seemed shocked when he saw the video. He insisted, I didn't know anything. I've been framed. But the evidence in the video showed otherwise. He was taken away by the police, and my sister-in-law pretended she knew nothing. But the police, already aware of Emily's testimony, wanted to ask her more questions. So they both ended up in custody. Later, they confessed everything. It turns out my sister-in-law would lure men into their home on nights my brother worked late shifts and take money from them. Realizing there was a demand for children among certain groups, she exploited it carefully. Emily, who knew nothing and was trying to help her bullied mother, was photographed posing as she was told. These photos seemed innocent, just pictures of a child. 
but my sister-in-law would develop them and show them to her customers, creating a bidding war as if at an auction. Strangely, she only lent out the photos, never selling them. Though despicable, this should have had nothing to do with my husband and me. But when my brother found out about his wife's business, instead of stopping her or protecting Emily, he started gathering men to become customers. More customers meant more money. He even tried to involve me, planning to force me into it and threatening me with photos of the scene. They locked Emily and me in their house on a day when the neighbors wouldn't be around, exchanging the spare key for a large sum of money, then leaving town overnight to prove their innocence. What they didn't expect was Emily, who always obeyed my sister-in-law without question, to regret telling me about the monsters to protect me. She didn't understand much of what was happening, but she knew the monsters were targeting them. By telling me, she brought the situation at my brother's house to light. When I learned about Emily's situation, I asked my husband to capture images of these so-called monsters. They leaked a lot of information, so the police acted promptly when we reported it. We'd also reported it to Child Protective Services, ensuring Emily's protection. When we told the police about my brother and his wife coming to our house, they secured Emily from them. My brother and his wife were arrested on serious charges like violations of child welfare laws and laws against child exploitation. Despite being first-time offenders, they couldn't avoid imprisonment. The photos they had taken over several years were considered highly malicious. Once an image is leaked online, it can never be erased. I was shocked when the police told me this. Fortunately, my sister-in-law had not digitized or sold Emily's photos, securely storing them to prevent any leakage. I can't comprehend how my once kind and reliable brother could become such a terrible person. We had been helping each other out as usual until then and the fact that I didn't notice this change scares me. Following the arrest of my brother and his wife, the so-called monsters were brought in for questioning by the police. They argued their innocence, claiming their plans hadn't succeeded, so they weren't guilty. However, the discovery of someone else's child's photos at their place and their involvement in other criminal acts confessed by my brother and his wife during interrogation led to their arrest on multiple charges. After dealing with these monsters in our lives, we went to Child Protective Services to inquire about Emily's situation. Her parents' arrest left her without anyone to care for her, and they were unfit guardians, so custody of Emily was taken away from them. Since neither my brother nor I have living parents, and my sister-in-law's family is estranged, Emily would have been placed with foster parents if no one from her family agreed to take her in. After discussing it with my husband, we decided to adopt Emily. To me, she's not just someone I'm indebted to, but also a girl I've grown to love as my own daughter. Leaving her was simply unbearable. Luckily, my husband agreed, and we saw this as an opportunity to move to my in-law's town. Our daughter, who loves her grandparents and always wanted an older sister, is overjoyed. She's been eagerly anticipating the weekend when she could see her grandparents more often. And now her wish of having Emily, whom she adores, as her big sister has come true. As for Emily, who finally escaped her abusive parents, she's adapting remarkably well to her new environment as an older sister. It's amazing how resilient kids can be, and she's beginning to lead a happy and peaceful life.